What up, guys? Welcome back to the channel. If you guys remember, I covered the history of the Saw Deathmatch. It was a three-part documentary that I did on my channel. You can go look at it. All three parts are up, finally. And I decided I'm going to do the history of the Circus Deathmatch this time. So a Circus Deathmatch is where they take barbed wire strands and they tie them along the ropes. So it makes like a big spider net for them to get caught in. So they put a giant scaffold right next to the ring for the wrestlers to jump off into the barbed wire net. The first ever Circus Death Match was from Big Japan Pro Wrestling and it was Mitsuhiro Matsunaga and Great Kojika versus Shoji Nakamaki and Ryuji Yamakawa. And it took place at Korokan Hall in Japan on January 6th of 1997. We get a promo from both teams but I don't know Japanese so unfortunately I can't tell you what they're saying. We get a classic Japanese title intro, and then we get a shot of the ring and the scaffold, and then we see Yamakawa and Nakamaki make their way to the ring. I read online that this match was actually Matsunaga's idea. He's fucking nuts. They look at the ring and examine the barbed wire, and then we see Matsunaga and Kojika come out. Both teams get announced into the match on each side of the scaffold, and then Nakamaki and Matsunaga climb up there and start the match. You could see that Big Japan Wrestling left the middle rope only for this match, and that's what they attached a barbed wire to. They both climb up there, and we get hit with another stare down, and then we get a nice shot of the barbed wire. The men walk over to each other and give each other some stiff shots, and then Matsunaga goes for a power bomb or a pile driver, and Nakamaki hits the deck like a fucking fish. Matsunaga hits him in the back and tries to get him off the scaffold, but he's holding on for dear life. It looks like he's pulling a Vic Grimes up there and doesn't want to go off. But Matsunaga just gets him off of it as Yamakawa starts to climb up there. As Nakamaki rides in pain, Yamakawa and Matsunaga fight on top of the scaffold. <laughs> Matsunaga gives Yamakawa some kicks and punches and then throws him off into the barbed bar. wire. I remember downloading like a 12 second clip of this spot with Matsunaga jumping off when I was like 10 years old on LimeWire. Matsunaga does a sick flip off the scaffold into the circus net onto Yamakawa. Men lay there tangled in the barbed wire as officials come and start to cut them out. This is the first circus death match, so I think Big Japan thought that it was going to take forever for the wrestlers to get out, so they decided to just cut the barbed wire instead. All four men are scrambling all over the ring, and Matsunaga gives some kicks to Yamakawa, but Nakamaki runs up and hits Matsunaga, and they start exchanging blows. <laughs> 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 
Atsunaga throws some stiff kicks at Nakamaki, and then he arranges the barbed wire and bulldogs him into it. Kojika and Yamakawa fight on the outside of the ring, and Matsunaga goes to suplex Nakamaki into the barbed wire, but he counters and power bombs Matsunaga into it. Nakamaki pushes Matsunaga outside the ring and they start fighting in the crowd and then Nakamaki brings him over to the stage and hits his head on it and throws a table at him. <laughs> Nakamaki throws another table towards the ring. <laughs> Kojika and Yamakawa fight around the arena as Matsunaga and Nakamaki throw a table into the ring and then Matsunaga gives them some more stiff kicks. <laughs> Matsunaga picks up Nakamaki and slams him onto the barbed wire and then he grabs Yamakawa and throws him into the ring and him and Kojika start fighting. <laughs> Matsunaga sets up a table and then starts kicking the living shit out of Yamakawa. <laughs> Matsunaga grabs a strand of barbed wire and then picks up Yamakawa and puts him on the table and climbs on the scaffold and wraps himself in barbed wire and gives Yamakawa a splash through the table. Matsunaga powerbombs Yamakawa into the barbed wire and goes for the pin, but Nakamaki breaks it up. <laughs> Nakamaki puts barbed wire on Matsunaga's forehead, and then all four men start brawling in the crowd. <laughs> make their way back towards the ring and Nakamaki throws a table towards the ring and Matsunaga throws one into the ring too and then they start fighting in the crowd more. Matsunaga sets up a table and Nakamaki grabs him and brings him to the other side of the ring and Yamakawa jumps off the scaffold but Matsunaga moves out of the way so he hits Nakamaki. Matsunaga sets up two tables in the ring underneath the scaffold and then we get a shot of Kojika and Nakamaki fighting and Kojika throws Nakamaki into the fans chairs. When they get up there, Yamakawa runs at Matsunaga and knocks him down, and then he puts his arms up to celebrate and then gives the cutthroat sign. Yamakawa goes to pick up Matsunaga but gets a low blow, and then Matsunaga power bombs him off the scaffold onto the two tables that don't even budge because this is fucking Japan.
It's so crazy how Japan would just use these tables over and over again. They never fucking break. I also noticed that Yamakawa was the one that really got the bad end of all the spots. Like, he got splashed through the table and he got power bombed off the scaffold. Matsunaga jumps off the scaffold and goes for the pin. <laughs> Naga cuts a promo in Japanese and then so does Yamakawa and then Yamakawa and Nakamaki celebrate by jumping on the barbed wire and slamming each other onto it and then high-fiving the crowd all around the ring. <laughs> We get a promo from all four men in Japanese, and that concludes the very first circus deathmatch, guys. The next time we saw a circus net ring was during the Big Born Deathmatch that happened during the Wing and BJW Crisis. Big Born Deathmatch was a 4 on 4 match and the weapons were barbed wire boards, electrified light tube boards, dry ice, thumbtacks, beds of nails, cactus, scorpions, coffins, circus net, nail baseball bat, barbed wire baseball bat, and electrified space heaters. Jesus Christ. The match is crazy, but not as crazy as it sounds, unfortunately. There was just way too many things going on at once, so it was kind of hard to follow, but I definitely suggest watching it if you've never seen it. These dudes were fighting in the ring, in the crowd, on balconies, going off the balconies. It was wild. I'll probably do a video on the match. The circus net ring was only used one time in this match, very shortly, so I'm just going to include that and that's it, but we see the great Pogo and Mass GK fighting by the ring. Yon? 8人が8人ともですね。とりあえずこう目先に手帳ですね。自分のアピールする場所に持ってって何かやってやろうって感じがあったと思うんですよ。誰まああのところどころだね、あの連携もありましたが、やはりあの1対1でいろんな見せ場
まずこれは相手を下にデンジャーネットに落とそうという攻防から始まるんですけど、ね、落とさないことにはちょっと話が始まりますやっぱちょっとしたあれでもうフラフラしちゃいますよねまたこれ結構揺れるんですよね<笑>揺れますよねこれそうですね本当にうちはあの経費を抑えて今まで生き残ってきた団体ですからさあここで落とせるのか落とせるのか自分も踏み込めないが相手を落としたさあリングの上に空中遊泳状態ですさあ何を狙うあーっとローリング先頭ローリング先頭ですま,まさしくジャパニーズハードコアです<笑>さあ、そして最後。We get a shot of the ring set up with the circus net, and then we see JC Bailey make his way to the ring. You could see IWA set up the circus net on the top rope for this match. You see Bailey go around and dap up and hug all the people in the crowd. He seemed like such a good guy. It's a shame we lost him. He's got some balls. I know I can't see my fat ass climbing up there. You know, I, I broke the ropes tonight. Can you imagine me taking a bump off that? The ring was just. Balls just fall in. Bailey immediately climbs the scaffold and he stands up on one of the platforms. And then we see Pondo start making his way to the ring and he gets on the mic and cuts an awesome promo about how Matsunaga invented this match. They're not clapping like you hear people clapping usually. And if, if I, I don't know if the camera's panning, but look throughout the match when you're watching this tape, you can see the faces on these people. They're just another shot. Let's see what Pondo has to say. That's true. The guy's name is Masanaga, and not only is he one of my good friends, JC's been watching videotapes of him just like I have. He's actually the guy that I started watching when I became retarded like this. <laughs> so, Pondo's retarded like this. JC, one more time. It's time to get hardcore in this building tonight. Nate, look at the locker rooms. The locker rooms is basically emptied out to watch this match. It is a curtain sell out tonight. Both men get introduced into the match, and then they started off with a collar and elbow tie up. And Pondo brings Bailey into the ring and starts digging his head into the barbed wire, which is pretty cool because they never went underneath the barbed wire in the other ones. Kick to the stomach. That's probably the most technical move you'll see this match, Nate. Collar and elbow tie up. Exactly. Don't fall, Dave. Praise in the United States. You know, it was done by uh, Big Japan, as Pondo had mentioned. I believe it was Matsunaga and Nakamaki. They're under the barbed wire. Fighting underneath. Pondo takes Bailey outside the ring and he whips him into the scaffold and they both start climbing up at the same time and they get on the first platform and we see the first dive into the barbed wire. That they're going to be standing on. Somebody's going to jump right back. They're they might get thrown. Oh. That uh, loses. Look how flimsy the scaffold looks. That's pretty flimsy. That's right. Well, it's not flimsy, it's, but it, 18 feet in the air and you have four poles going up. I mean, this can't really be. Pondo and Bailey take turns punching each other on the platform, and then Bailey gives him a low blow and throws him into the bar bar. As I said, how is JC Bailey's going to be looking good for the King of the Deathmatch tournaments coming up this yeah, year? Yeah, coming up. Madman Pondo oh. thrown off the first rung. Into the spider net of barbed wire. Bailey says fuck it and climbs onto the next platform and does a flip onto Pondo. He needs to score a pinfall. What is Bailey doing? Oh my god. He needs to score a pinfall in order to get the victory here. Oh、Pondo、no, this is no way. What is Bailey doing? You said he's not, nobody's gonna jump off. A、oh. senton! A senton into the barbed wire and on top of Madman Pondo. And his leg went through. 
Can she count? Bailey starts making his famous cries for help as everyone starts to pull them out of the barbed wire. Wire. Are they ever getting out of here? We have ring attendants, security from the IWA, trying to help these two guys. They're, I mean, they're trapped right now. Bailey putting his own body on the line, executing a senton off that second rung, 12 feet in the air, on the man, Matt Pondo, but unable to attempt a pinfall after that. I don't think he got out. They could not get Pondo out of the barbed wire, so they had to, like, hoist him up on the barbed wire and somehow pull him out. And Rodden pu pushing the body of Pondo up to uh, stop the barbs from cutting into his body with so much force. I wouldn't have to say that barbed wire would be worse than falling into the ring on the impact. Of course. Me worse than falling onto the concrete floor. And both men escape it. I thought Ian was stuck. Both men finally get untangled from the barbed wire, and Pondo immediately starts climbing up to the second platform, and Bailey follows him right up. Wire. What the hell's that? This powerhouse guy from Japan that thinks he's like Goldberg or some shit. I don't know. But right now, they are once again on the second... They start fighting on the platform, and Pondo takes Bailey by the head and smashes it into the board, and then they stand up and do a Russian leg sweep into the barbed bar. Bloody mess from those barbs. His forehead, a bloody mess. The same for J.C. Bailey. Fans getting behind Pondo. Both of these wrestlers are favorites of the IWA fans. What's he going for? A Russian leg sweep? You gotta be kidding me! You've got gotta to be kidding me! You have gotta oh, be. What's he going for? A, a Russian leg sweep? You gotta be kidding me! Oh. Oh my Both men are tangled in the barbed wire again, and it's up to the fans and the staff to pull them out again. Again, not just on a yeah. You know, this is a big show. This is a bigger show, but it's not a death match. Exactly. Uh, the biggest show of the year, deathmatch wise, for the company. What, what can he we see Pondo get out underneath the barbed wire pretty quick, but Bailey's legs are really tangled up in the barbed wire, and it takes him a minute to get out. You don't have to Jim Fannin called for the bell. And the fans showing their appreciation for what these two kids just Jim Fannin called for the match to end, but Pondo and Bailey get face to face in the crowd, and they point up and say, let's go to the fucking top. I don't think that's homage to Sabu. I think they're thinking about climbing the thing again. The match is over. Jim Fannin, assistant promoter of the IWA, put a stop to the match already. This is what why it's doing? Madman Pondo, J.C. Bailey, and IWA. They're not. They did not they're fucking do nuts. this. They do not have... Pondo is... Cl they're climbing to the top of this thing. The that men get on the top platform and exchange a couple blows, and then Pondo superplexes Bailey off the top platform into the barbed wire. Go back to the locker room. Get they want a winner. The there was no winner with Jim Fannin stopping the match. Pondo and Bailey battling it out on the top of this scaffold. 18 feet in the air. 18 feet in the air. Which standing up over 100. 20 feet in the air. Oh, no. Pondo's hooking Bailey oh, no. for a suplex. There's no way that he's going to suplex him off this thing. No way he's going to do a super No way in hell. Just quit. Impossible. Ring the bell. Pondo going for a super, super flex. Oh. Holy man. fuck. Holy fuck. That's it. That's kind of super flex. Oh. Holy man. fuck. Holy fuck. Super Bailey and Pondo lay tangled in the barbed wire screaming for help as IWA staff starts coming and cutting the barbed wire as everyone tries to help them out. A superplex from 20 feet in the air into a net of barbed wire by Madman Pondo. But that, that takes out the flesh of both of these wrestlers. It hurt Pondo just as much as it hurt J.C. Bailey. The match was over. The match was over, but they wanted to see a winner. Nobody has won yet. This is decided by pinfall. Referee of record, Mickey is inside the ring, but neither man able to go for a cover. 
They're just trying to be freed of the barbed wire right now. We have ring attendants, security guards, wrestlers, fans, fans trying to trying to see if these guys are all right. Everyone appreciative of their effort, of their determination for the doing this. Just cleared out and everything. You know, we've seen power bombs off balconies. Uh, Russian leg sweeps out of balconies, uh, sentons out of balconies, but we've never seen a superplex off of an 18-foot scaffold. scaffold into a net of barbed wire. Devastating maneuver. Pondo is the one that executed the maneuver as he is freed of the barbed wire. As it is pulled out of his flesh. For J.C. Bailey to only be 19 years old, he sure has a lot of balls. And only a couple of months in the IWA, showing, trying to make a name for himself, trying to show to these fans of the IWA that he belongs in this promotion. Jim Fannin had a dislike for J.C. Bailey, but he gets on the mic and says he accepts him into the family, and Pondo cuts a promo on how no one would do it except for Bailey. So many times I ask people to do this match with me. The only favor I can give you Sparmer's going to give me a copy of this tape, and I'm going to put a Ryan Boston on his hands, baby. I'd say JC's on his way to Japan. <laughs> well, Man Man Pondo doing what he can. Ian Rotten and a few other guys cut some really long promos and celebrate together, but I cut it out so it wouldn't be so long. We get a shot of all the cuts on Pondo's body, and then him and JC cut a wholesome promo together. Cut back around at the glue, yeah. Looks like you might have one on your arm, too. I have to get you cleaned up. First time and the last time. <laughs> yes. We'll do this in America together. Fuck it. First time and the last time. <laughs> the barefoot thumbtacks, now this. One year later, we would see Pondo in another circus death match, but this time it was for Big Japan Wrestling against Ryuji Ito at the North Wave 2004 Night 2 show. They put a scaffold next to the circus net ring just like they did in America, and this match was basically just a recreation of what they did in America, but on Japanese soil. We see the BJW match graphic, and then we see Pondo come to the ring with a stop sign, and he pushes the Japanese chairs out of his way, and he climbs up the scaffold and stands up there, and then he climbs back down. I... Next we see Ryuji Ito make his way to the ring, and the Japanese fans are excited as fuck to see him, and he looks pretty hyped up. He climbs on the top turnbuckle and takes his shirt off for the crowd, and then he jumps back down, and Pondo runs and attacks him, and they start the match off. <laughs> The men go for a collar and elbow tie-up, but they quickly end it, and they start fighting in the crowd, and then Pondo cracks Ryuji with a stop sign. Pondo raises his arms, and the Japanese crowd shows him so much love, and then Ryuji Ito kicks him in the stomach and whips him into the fans' chairs, and then he goes and grabs a wooden table and throws it on top of Pondo, and then sets it up and puts him on it and jumps off the wall with a splash through the table. ちらっと見ました。おっと、そして、なんかここの壁が本当こうやって登ってくださいと言わんばかりの形してますからね。まあ、登ってくださいとは言ってないような気がしますけどね。あの、普通の家の2階より高いぐらいじゃないですか。ま
これぐらいの高さだとまだそうでもないと思うんですが、えー、もう一段ぐらい上がるとかなり怖いと思いますよお足を支えポンドが応戦しますちょっとあの屋根に頭がつっかえてそうですねしゃがんだ体勢になっちゃいますよ、ね、なかなか技が繰り出してないうわーっと落ちたポンドが転落であります無造作に投球してまいりました伊藤選手がわーっと糸が飛んだー小広The men lay tangled in the barbed wire for a minute, and then Bad Boy Hito and a couple other wrestlers come up and help him out of the barbed wire, and they meet up again and start fighting outside the ring. Ito crawls and finally gets to his feet, and he rams Pondo's head into the ring post, and then he puts him in a tarantula onto the scaffold. It's actually really dope. 何のためらいもなく投下していきましたね、今度ね。さあ、鉄柱攻撃。また、これは櫓のすぐそばであります。タランチュラじゃないですか。おっと、これは、うまく櫓の鉄骨を利用しての、タランチュラ。これ、今度選手見るから、体が硬そうですから、辛いでしょう。これ、また、鉄骨がね、めり込んで苦しいでしょうね。このあたりのセンス。しかも、おそらく5メートルぐらいは。さっきまで3メートルぐらいですかね。はい。When they get up there, Pondo punches him in the stomach and smashes his head into the platform. Pondo holds Ito's head like he's going to throw him off the scaffold, but they end up getting up and fighting and they do a Russian leg sweep into the barbed wire. 確かにこう転落しただけで終わってしまうおっとこれはなんだかわず落としですかかわずだけからうわーっとかわず落としポンド選手ちょっとかなり危険な角度で落ちましたねいやーすごいデンジャーネット直行のかわず落としであります DJW スタッフ and wrestlers come out and start to help them out of the bar bar 事故現場のようなリング上イトゲッツアウトゥバーバイアフーストにゴーゾーバーとスカフォールにウェイトゥパンドウンパンドゲッツアップンアメディティポインツアップセイン、レッツファッキングゲッアップテアゲン。ポンドはこれ一番上に一番上に行こうというような要請ですかね。ですね、もうあの二段目から落とし。I sped it up a little bit, but the men start climbing back up the scaffold and they go all the way up to the top platform. ですね、ちょっとこれはすごい高さです、ね、な6 7メー,ターありますね,あますねそしてこれは大変だ面ティーズ throwing each other off of the scaffold for a minute and then Pondo throws flower into Ito's face and gives him a DDT 落とした方が勝ちじゃないですかええー、確かにそうですねどう落とすかですけど、ねはい、伊藤選手は多分ポンド選手を落としたああこれはパウダーですね。粉ですね。はい。ちょっと伊藤の視界を遮りました。さあ、これはどういう流れになるのか。この一発が今度隠し持ってたんですか。Pondo takes the safety bars off the scaffold, and him and Ito start reversing each other's moves until they finally go off one last dive into the barbed wire. この金具を利用するのか。果たして。あ、これは金具を捨てた。これはやはりデンジャーネットへ落とす奇跡でしょうかね。何を落とすのか。ブレンバスターの対戦。いや、ちょっと待ってください。これブレンバスターって言うけど、自分も落ちそうですね。はい。斉藤がこの必死の競争。おっと、タイムリーカット。斉藤のブレンバスターが。やっと持ち上がらない
あっちゃーまあ今、この選手がね、わずかながらこうカバーの体勢に入っていたということですよね、はい、ルール上、これでフォールですね、はい、いやー、すさまじい一戦。Hondo and Ito just lay there in the barbed wire as they start cutting it off the ropes and untangling them, and then Pondo cuts a promo. This match was awesome, but I really want to know why they did the same exact moves they did in America. If you guys are enjoying this deathmatch style documentary and you want to see more plus exclusive Patreon matches and content, head to patreon.com slash blake0561. Do not use the Patreon app to find me because it will not come up. You have to pull up your browser and literally type in patreon.com slash blake0561. Now back to the action. We didn't see a circus deathmatch for three years until IWA Mid-South threw another one at King of the Deathmatches 2007 Night 2 in the semifinals between Corporal Robinson and Dysfunction. We get a shot of the circus net ring with light tubes on it and then we see Dysfunction make his way to the ring. Dysfunction walks around the ring and scopes out the barbed wire and then he climbs underneath and he gets in the ring and sits underneath there and waits for Corp. We see Corporal Robinson come out and make his way to the ring and he's covered in blood from his previous matches. Corp walks around the ring and then throws his hands up for the fans and then he climbs underneath the barbed wire where Dysfunction is patiently waiting on him and they start the match underneath the barbed wire. It's pretty cool. The men scoot over to each other and Dis immediately kicks Corp in the head and Corp gives him a shitload of punches. Dis kicks Corp a few more times in the head and then he picks him up with a fireman's carry so his back touches the barbed wire. on the offense, punches Corp a few times in the face, and then picks up a light tube and breaks it over his head and carves his forehead with it. Dis elbows Corp in the back and gives him a chop, and Corp gives him a chop back, and the men exchange blows in the crowd. Then get back in the ring and Dis goes for a pin on Corp, but he only gets a two count. And then Corp grabs a light tube and Dis hits him in the back a few times. And Corp picks him up with the fireman's carry and puts his back into the barbed wire. Corp straight up collapses and we see a perfect light tube go right through the barbed wire into his hand and he breaks it over just his head and then takes another light tube and headbutts it into his head. <laughs> Oh, <laughs> 
Corp exits the ring and then he looks underneath for weapons and Disc goes outside and attacks him, but Corp punches him in the face a bunch of times and then gets on top of him and gives him a figure four leg lock and breaks a light tube over his head. Just grabs the rest of the light tube and breaks it over Corp's head and then puts him in a sharpshooter. Nice. The men get back on their feet outside and start punching each other in the face, and then Dysfunction climbs on the top rope, and Corporal Robinson runs up there and throws him into the barbed wire. Corp gets behind Dis and puts him in the Cobra clutch and Dis taps out and Corp wins the match. Corporal Robinson make his way to the back and then we get a shot of dysfunction laying down on the outside of the ring and he gets up and heads to the locker room as the crowd cheers him on. In 2009, Ballistic Championship Wrestling threw their third deathmatch tournament called Brink of Death 3 and in the finals it was a circus deathmatch between Toby Klein and Day. This circus death match was different because they had this weird flag system where like if you grab the green flag and you get to the top of the scaffold you automatically win. So I don't know what the red one was for but whatever. Toby Klein makes his way to the ring and he's all bandaged up on his head and body because he just went through two other matches in this death match tournament. He's Toby jumps the guardrail and then we see Day make his way to the ring and he walks around in the crowd and Toby Klein sneaks up behind him and attacks him. I see David Day but I've totally lost sight of uh, Mr. Insanity. He's getting a hot dog. He ain't stupid. I also... Oh shit, he's coming out of the crowd. Oh shit. Oh. Oh. Ring the bell. Ring the bell, cross. Jesus Christ. <laughs> my first fucking day. It's my first day. Toby elbows Day in the head and then he gets on top of him and starts choking him with the barricade and then he picks him up and gives him a headbutt and tosses him over the guardrail. Toby Klein is a uh, former King of the Deathmatch champion. He's with Pondo we trust. <laughs> yeah. yeah, right. Uh, I'd never trust Pondo with my life. 
I seen him carry a thumbtack cock into a Waffle House one time. That was what I said. <laughs> I'll never trust his ass. That man is my new role model. <laughs> Obi Klein jumps the guardrail and picks up Day and starts punching him in the face until he falls into the barbed wire and then he takes the barbed wire and puts his arm into it. Oh, Chinese buffers. Ask him now. I don't give. Boy, I, I tell you, unfair advantage. I, mean, I can barely hear the screams over the roar of this crowd. Oh, the nurples. Definitely. <laughs> Holy shit, he Toby picks up Day and he whips him right through the guardrail. That's his dad desperation. Oh, oh. I'm offended. David Day asked me for a cold pizza. Oh, 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 hey. Oh, 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 hey. Thousands of dollars. Got got up. Up. Toby Klein picks up Day and hits his head on the ring post and then he goes to whip him into the guardrail again, but Day stops short and he runs into the ring and grabs the green flag. <laughs> Oh, baby coming Look at that speedy little shit. Look at he, he. I'm assuming he's green. <laughs> well, he is now. Oh, the meerkat got him. Toby runs up and says, fuck that, and kicks him in the stomach and steals his green flag. His back turned to Toby's oh. line, which is, no, Toby's stealing it. So I get to climb up there and win That's now? That's a meerkat. Yeah. That's a meerkat. That easy. You have to get yeah. your own flag, I think. I don't know the rules. Go get the other one. The rules in middle court. It disappeared. Oh. Even the announcers don't know how this match works, and Day hits Toby in the stomach and crawls into the ring, and Toby climbs in there and starts digging his head into the barbed wire. Come on, David! We just saved this fucking <laughs> show. <laughs> That's awesome. And it died when we did. That sucked. Yeah. <laughs> that was, that was yeah, so bad. Yeah, uh, <laughs> when, when the commentating crew is leading cheers. Oh. Yeah. What the hell's wrong with you? Day ends up grabbing the red flag and he leaves the ring and he starts to climb up the scaffold and Toby Klein says fuck that and goes and punches him in the stomach and chokes him on the scaffold. Never works. Oh. Yeah. You're in Rutland, Ohio. <laughs> they don't know how to pronounce awkward. Yeah. They don't know what it means. After the men are done fighting on the way up, they tease a bunch of moves off the scaffold until one of them finally goes off and one of them wins the tournament. David Day is going to die. Oh. Yeah, David Day is staying. Why did I beat that man, Pondo? That could be Pondo up there. You're absolutely right. Oh, there we go. Oh, now everybody. Oh, my God. Oh, oh a nice float over my David. Oh, my God. No, 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 no. Headbutts in. Oh, oh god! Oh. I don't. I don't want this to happen. <laughs> shit. I, I don't care who you are. I don't want that shit to happen. Oh, a belly to no. belly. Oh, oh, my oh, god. Oh, oh my god! Oh my god! Damn it! It's over. Ring the bell. That's it. Oh, oh my god! god. Oh, oh, oh my god! god. Damn it! Mm. Oh my God. God damn it. It's over. Ring the bell. That's it. As David Day lays there tangled in the barbed wire, we get a shot of Toby Klein on top of the scaffold, and then we see a bunch of the fans come out and try to help David out of the barbed wire, and he's stuck in there for a little bit, and then he finally gets out. You better be getting a damn good shot of this. I have never, ever heard David Day. After they cut David out, Toby Klein gets on the mic and gives him some props. Get up! Let's hear it. This is one tough motherfucker right here. Toby Klein gets his trophy and he goes up and hugs Day and they walk to the back together in a wholesome deathmatch moment. It's a nice show of respect there, Phantom.
That's the, that's the thing, man. All these death matches, that's what you see at the very end. Yep. Total respect. Out of Total all the respect. Guys. A little bit of gayness is pretty cool. Well, the only time you see gayness. Two years later, at CZW's Tangled Web 4 in 2011, we saw another circus deathmatch. It made it even bigger because they had two rings, and one of them had a cage wall around it, and the other one is a circus net. The match is Scotty Vortex versus Drake Younger in the Tangled Web deathmatch. Drake and Scotty have been feuding, and this was their third match after having a match at CZW's Proving Grounds and Prelude to Violence, which were sick matches. We get the match graphic, and then we see Drake Younger make his way to the ring. <laughs> gets in the ring and poses on the ropes and then we see Scotty Vortex make his way to the ring. <laughs> Scotty poses on the turnbuckle and then him and Drake get face to face and they have the longest stare down ever. I mean they stare at each other for like two or three minutes straight. I sped it up like triple the speed and it's still so long. The men get face to face again and they start shoving each other and throwing blows and then Drake tries to throw Scotty into the cage but he reverses it and then he gives Drake a running kick. We'll begin. And as you can see on the outside, the locker room has cleared out to witness the absolute insanity. Oh, the South Coast Vortex! Not to cut you off here. Both men battling on the apron. Precariously by that oh. steel cage wall. Drake fighting off those hard elbows. Both of these men got to start this match off cautiously because it's going to end. Drake gets up and he picks up Scotty and chucks him into the cage wall. Down goes Drake Younger. Oh, wait a minute! No! Right! Drake immediately says, fuck it, and he climbs on the top rope and drops an elbow on Scotty. Scotty Vortex, courtesy of the Golden Boy! And he's not done! This is only Ascending to the top! Kid. Oh, wait a oh, minute! Drake. Getting his footing! Oh! Just driving that elbow right to the heart of Scotty Vortex. Getting his footing! Oh! Both men roll into the ring together, and then they both exit the ring together, and Drake brings Scotty all the way around the ring. Close to my goddamn cup right here, guys. Drake Younger just manhandling Scotty. Drake throws Scotty into the scaffold a few times, and then he picks him up and tries to Irish whip him into it, and Scotty whips him into it. Golden Boy, he didn't hit a different demeanor coming in. Oh, into tonight's match. Usually he's in there smiling because he's the, the highest paid combat zone wrestler. But tonight, different demeanor, much more serious demeanor because this is a very serious match. He's got himself into Oh, and into the scaffolding goes the Golden Boy. Then driven back. Scotty brings Drake around the other side of the scaffold, and then he asks the fans if they want him to go up, and they say yes, and he gives Drake some chops and heads up. Chairs match. You can relive all the action. Oh, let's not relive that. On hybrident.tv, but right now we're live on hybrident.tv. Oh, wait a minute. And Scotty climbs up there, and Drake follows him right up, and they fight on the top platform, and then we see the first dive into the barbed wire. One involved, the Golden Boy goes low, and Scotty Vortex goes down even further. God, somebody, oh God, you see Drake, he just quickly looked back at that tangled web. Oh, no. Oh, my God. Look at these guys both bent for Karen position. No. No. Come on now, Scotty. Think about the good time. Oh, my God. Oh my. Scotty says, let's fucking go, and he does the classic flip off the platform into the barbed wire like the other match. No. The 
them and are both completely tangled in barbed wire and the CZW staff has to come help them get out. What, three minutes into the match and the men are stuck in the barbed wire tangled web in ring number two as staff and fellow wrestlers are trying to cut them out of the webbing right now. A heinous landing for both of these. They get Drake out of the barbed wire and he climbs over the ropes and rolls into the ring and then Scotty gets out too and he climbs into the ring also. Right here. The contraption itself is splintered. All the force from both men's bodies crashing down into that. And for the safety of both men, the staff and the wrestlers rush to the ring to make sure they can get out of that spider net. Scotty goes for the pin on Drake but only gets a two count, so he picks up Drake and he whips him into the ropes and they counter each other's moves until Scotty gives him an integrity. Heating up here, Fever pitch, ducks the elbow, up and over the top, Jacques Rousseau style. Oh, soul butt. Oh, big kick to the head by Scotty Vortex, and down goes Drake Young. Scotty whips Drake into the corner, and then he gives him a running clothesline, and then he picks Drake up and puts him on the top rope, and he sets up two chairs in the ring and gives him a Frankensteiner through the chairs. Oh, what is this? Wait a minute. Oh. Frankensteiner onto the chairs by Vortex to the Golden Boy. Scotty Vortex sets up a chair in the corner, and then he takes Drake and smashes his head into it, and we get a nice shot of the blood dripping down Drake's forehead, and then Scotty sets up a pane of glass. Scotty goes for a powerbomb, but Drake counters. And to the Golden Boy. Uh, Drake Young, though, driving to Scotty Vortex back. Drake Young oh, with a no. palm thrust. Oh, no. Here we go. Here we go. No. No. Oh my god! Here we go! No! No! no. Oh my god! Oh no. Drake goes on top of Scotty and goes for the pin but only gets a two count and he stands up and he puts his arms in there and then he puts Scotty in a couple different submission holds and grabs some chairs and hits him in the back. No other way. Wrestling ain't no joke. Scotty Vortex went flying through that pane of glass and has been the worst for wear ever since. As Drake Younger just continues to beat. Drake picks up Scotty and Scotty punches him a few times in the face and bounces off the ropes, but Drake gives him a DDT. Vortex grabs the most Brazilian athlete in the company, fight back! No! Drake goes for the pin but only gets a two count, so he takes some panes of glass and he starts setting them up, and some officials check on Scotty and Drake attacks them and then gives a pile driver to one of the refs. Vortex not the only casualty, we just lost a pane of glass. Just twitching on the was, ground right now, we have our doctor. Oh, oh no, yeah! Hey, life is beautiful. Drake Younger is throwing Maven Bentley out of the ring, throwing the nurse out of the ring. Oh God, now he's throwing Drew Blood. Yes! God, Fire! Oh! Wonderful! That's the receipt from Cage of Death. Drake goes for a powerbomb on Scotty into the cage, but he reverses it and he sets up a chair in the ring and jumps off of it and drop kicks Drake into the cage wall. Scotty by Vortex! Thank God, go Scotty! Scotty Vortex, look how heavily taped the nurse had to tape his hand to stop the bleeding. Whoa! Oh, into the cage, and into remnants of glass that was left on that cage. Scotty, Scotty asks for a table, and the CZW staff gladly gives it to him, and he sets it up in the ring, and he puts Drake on it, and he climbs on the top rope, but Drake gets up and puts a tack strip on the table, and then superplexes Scotty through. Step ahead of him oh. for most of the contest, but what we have there right now is a board. Carpenter's oh. out there. God, haven't these two men been through enough in the last three months? No! Now they're going to the top. They're going sky high. No! Oh, Jesus! This isn't the type of match that shortens careers. This is the type of match that ends careers. They're going sky high. No! I love all. Drake goes for the pin again, but only gets a two count, so he picks up Scotty and they exchange blows. They're continuing the punishment, but Scotty Vortex will I'm just going to let it roll for a minute because Drake and Scotty do some awesome suplexes to each other and throwing each other on their fucking heads. Oh, oh no! Whoa! Oh. 
One armed man, Scotty Vortex. Scotty Vortex, Scotty uses lethal legs because his hands and arms are damaged. Oh! Oh! German suplex. One, two, and Mercy. Oh, once again. But Drake Younger was able to latch on like a pit bull with those Germans and stay connected. But look at Vortex. Cover here. It's got to be a one, two, and. Scotty Vortex had it, had, couldn't use that injured hand. Otherwise, that match would have been over right there. Oh! Oh, God! Scotty picks up Drake over his head, but Drake gives him a dragon suplex, which Scotty no sells and puts Drake through a pane of glass, and then Drake no sells that and gives him a huge clothesline. At least Scotty Vortex says, Come on, MF! Scotty Vortex popped up. He is on fire now. Oh, God, oh, God. Oh! Whoa! What the hell? Golden Boy is fired now. Oh God, oh God. Oh! Whoa! What the hell? Golden Boy is fired up! The Golden Boy is fired up! Cover here, one. Drake picks up Scotty, but Scotty counters, and they end up doing a couple moves and countering each other until Drake gives him a running vertebrae. But Drake Young was able to avert it, and now he's going for the Drake's landing. Oh! Thanks, guy. All that shrapnel in the ring certainly would have pulled away. Vortex! Yes! Oh! There it is! Drake's landing! Cover here! One, two! Drake only gets a two count, so he picks up a water jug on a stick and nails Scotty with it, and then he power bombs him onto a garbage can lid and only gets a two count, so he makes a pile of glass in the ring and gives Scotty a tiger driver on. What does Drake Younger have planned here as he's sweeping the shrapnel into the middle of the ring? Weapons all over the place! Oh, tiger driver! One, two, oh, look at Scotty Vortex. Not Drake and Scotty both start making their way over to the circus net ring, and Scotty gets on the top rope, and Drake gives him a back suplex into the barbed wire net. He's hot on his trail. What does the golden boy have planned? Those ring ropes aren't safe when you've lost this much blood. It's hard to get your footing. No. No, 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 no the back suplex. Oh, my, oh God. my God! Stop the goddamn! This doesn't need to be done! Oh! Oh, oh my God! And that injured hand is. Oh! and Scotty are tangled in the barbed wire once again and the staff has to climb into the barbed wire to get them out. You could see Scotty stuck by his hair in the barbed wire. It's fucking insane. Wants to go out of the sport they've dedicated their life to with injury. Scotty's literally on top of Drake in the barbed wire, meaning that his weight is pushing Drake's back right into the barb. Into the flesh of the golden boy. Settling scene here at Tangled Web 4. For the safety of these men, staff of... Just rush the ring to make sure they can get out of it. Scotty Vortex is left free. Now Drake Younger is coming free. Standing ovation from these fans just for the fact that both of these men are able to continue. Drake gets out and he takes a breather and walks around the ring for a minute and then he goes right back up to the scaffold. Hit a barbed wire. Drake and Scotty look at each other and they both start climbing up the scaffold. And now, we're at the most gruesome stalemate oh of all time. Are you kidding me? Oh, come on. Both these men are now climbing up the scaffolding. Woo! Then climb to the top of the platform, and Drake goes for a suplex, but Scotty gives him the infernal implant into the barbed bar. wire. 15 feet in the air right here, guys. Come oh, on. No. Not again. Third time's not the charge. Come on, guys. Watch the lights. Stop it. Oh, God. No. Wait a minute! It's over! It's not worth it! Guys, don't put your bodies through this! Oh, Holy shit! Well, we're back here again with both men stuck in the barbed wire and the CZW crowd is fucking going nuts. Holy shit! Holy shit! Holy shit! Holy shit! Oh 
By this time in the match, the circus net was like pretty much destroyed, so it was pretty easy for the men to get back out. So they crawl out and they roll back into the ring. Echo circus death match is the type of match that. This is the type of match that ends careers. I lost. Scotty tries to pin Drake, but only gets a two count. And Drake gets up and starts chewing on glass. And then he stands up and points at Scotty Vortex and says, "Let's fucking go!" And they start hitting each other in the face a million times. Dragon off a scaffold into a spider net. Bottom Understanding line. is beyond me. Shit just got beyond real. Fucking Superman right here. My God, more of a shade. By Drake and Scotty, center of the ring. Drake kicks Scotty and gives him a swisher sweep. Beyond Superman versus Batman. Oh, swisher sweep by the Golden Boy. One, two. Scotty kicked out of the roll up, so Drake starts pushing some glass into a pile again, and he goes to give him a vertebraker, but Scotty reverses and gives him a swisher sweet into the glass and goes for the pin, but only gets a two count again, so he picks him up and gives him a second swisher sweet for the pin. Hey, man. How? How are these? Oh, second swisher sweep. Cover. One, two, and three. We get a shot of Scotty's cut up back, and then we see Drake Younger laying in all the broken glass in the ring, and this was a fucking awesome match. The wrestlers and staff come out, and they celebrate with Scotty Vortex and pick him up on their shoulders as the crowd goes crazy, and then we see Drake Younger start to make his way into the back, and we see a shot of Scotty Vortex make his way into the back, and that's a wrap on this match, guys. Drake looks at the crowd pretty satisfied, and you could tell both men really put a lot into this match, and they pulled it off. It was fucking crazy. And finally, we have our last circus death match. It's Bryant Woods versus Spider Boudreaux from IWA Deep South's Carnage Cup 8 in round 1 in 2012. We see Bryant Woods make his way to the ring, and this dude has fucking, like, bike locks around his earlobes. Check it out. <laughs> Next, we see Spider Boudreaux make his way to the ring, who was a big star in the Saw documentary that I made. <laughs> Both men grab a light tube and start the match off with a long stare down, and then they both break a light tube over each other's head at the same time. <laughs> oh, underway in glass, spraying into the crowd from the get go. Bryant hits Spider with a light tube and then takes the broken end of it and carves his forehead up. Boudreaux, Bryant Woods with the light tube across the back there. I, of course, am smooth pleasing. Oh! Breaks across the head. Bryant finds a bat with a bunch of bottle claps glued to it, and he hits Spider with it, and then Spider hits him and takes it from him and nails him with the bat. Really no uh, way to go into the ring, and Spider Bedrew busted open in the back of his head already. Oh! Big shot across the top of the head there from Spider Bedrew. Right back, man. That's uh, bottle caps on that one. Oh! Spider walks away for a second, but then decides to crack Brian in the head with it again and then hits him in the back with it. Here. I know, it was perfect timing, like we just oh. started, so you must have been here right at the beginning. Uh, I know how the Carnage <laughs> Cup usually works. It <laughs> starts a little bit after time. Well, it was like 2.30, and they're like, all right, the band's going to play now. Well, I, I was, was like, why? The, I was passing word for people to stall just for my uh. appearance. On the <laughs> oh, vicious shot. You see there, I don't know if uh, the camera's in or close enough. You can Spider throws some headbutts at Bryant, and then Bryant throws some back at him, and then picks up a kendo stick and starts hitting Spider with it. Oh, headbutts. I don't know why anybody oh. would want to put syringes in their armbands. Uh, I know, that's... Farouk never did that when he wore his armbands. <laughs> All right, let's stick with Farouk. Back. That's the best one. Oh, kendo stick. Sandman. I, I see that we have a nice turnout oh. in the Orange Cup. Yes, and they're kind of sp Bryant picks up a thumbtack bat and hits Spider in the head with it. Looks like a decent draw, if you will. Thumbtacks there on the bat. Giving it right back. The men exchange blows on the outside, and then Bryant breaks another light tube over Spider's back. I see Spider supporting a new <laughs> Mohawk this year. Yes. Something a little bit different than he usually does. Oh! Hey, light tube into the kidney. And Bryant grabs a light tube and Spider grabs a bat with skewers in it and he starts hitting Brian. Yeah, that's what they come here for. 
And of course, this match being over. first is one of the going to be the, one of the worst about that as well. Yeah, what is that? Oh, it's like skewer it's like the skewers like thumbtack. You see a skewer stuck into Brian's head, and Spider grabs it and twists it around. Weapons again this year. Oh, you know, is he that is. where he gets no, where he yeah. get his ideas? Actually, from. I think I think a fan brought that one. I'm not positive, but I don't think Kevin built that in particular instrument. Ah. But you know, you thought it was a great idea. <laughs> you know, he's a hit for After the men exchange blows, Bryant picks up a bat with pine cones glued to it and fucking rock spider with it. And both are bleeding pretty heavily. Pine cone bat. Oh! oh how appropriate that there would be a pine cone bat here in Elkmont, Alabama. Bryant grabs a box that has a prosthetic arm wrapped in barbed wire and beats spider with it. That's a tree. And now Bryant Woods, from <laughs> Bryant from the woods, because he's got his pine cones, <laughs> has a... It looks what? like a prosthetic arm with barbed wire wrapped around it. And he carries that around in his guitar <laughs> case or whatever he's got. Maybe it's a trumpet. Bryant grabs a light tube and Spider kicks him in the stomach and then hits him in the back and then grabs a staple gun and staples Brian's face. Oh, I would. <laughs> like the Barry Horowitz gimmick, you know? Mm -hmm. Patting yourself on the back. Spider now with a staple gun. Oh, right in the camera there. Smart Mark Video delivering the action. Looks like he got him around the mouth. Right in the cheek, it looks like. Oh, big shot. Bryant grabs a chair and cracks Spider over the head with it three times, and then Spider takes it from him and cracks him with it. Bryant now grabbing a chair here. Watch out. Oh, oh caught him in the side. Gives him Two another shots. one for good measure. Three. No. And then we're cracked on Spider. We're He's fired right back chair. now. He's got the chair. A chair gets and swung. He swings for the fences here. Oh. Stiff. Medic change blows and then Bryant headbutts a light tube into Spider's head. Change. It's actually our ring canvas. So. Ah. Kevin went ahead and just bought him one. Bryant light wins. tube. Oh, he headbutts it. Headbutt. He's already coming back. Bryant takes a pair of pliers and puts it to Spider's head and he starts to pull something out. I'm pretty sure it's his eyebrow ring. You're a, you have experience with concussions. Would you headbutt after one? I, I would be ready to tap out after <laughs> that chair shot to the head. I, I wouldn't. I understand. It looks like a syringe in the head or something. I can't really. What was that? The men exchange blows on the outside, and then Spider takes Brian around the back of the U-Haul where there's like a 12-foot ladder, and Brian climbs up, and then Spider follows him up there, and the men battle on top until Spider gives him a spider driver into the circus net with light tube. Oh. I bet. That's it was like why two hours, man. Maybe that's why we started a little bit behind. Yes. It was really silly things. You know, I might add the U-Haul truck makes a good sound effect when the guy yes. takes a bump on it here. I can kind of see inside of it, and it's like really bowing down there. That's probably not good. Yeah, you're looking at probably uh -oh. four or five. Uh oh Spider driver, perhaps? Oh! Spider Boudreaux bets him to day number two of the 2012 Carnage Cup. It has to be a favorite here amongst the fans. The fans are starting it out with the holy shit. Winner of the match, advancing to the next round, Spider Boudreaux. He's looking for the wire snippers. Now uh, after the match, Spider starts to help Brian out of the barbed wire in another wholesome death match moment. Nice. And that concludes all of the official circus death matches, guys. I think the reason they didn't have so many circus death matches was because they had to use the ring and they had to set it up and take it down in front of the fans and it probably took a long time. So what they did was they started to make other like spider net boxes like a tournament of death five. Excuse me! A 
That's a far cry from... IWA East Coast provided us with a nice alternative to circus death matches by having a barbed wire trampoline in their Death From Below match from Masters of Pain 2008 between Ryuji Ito and Danny Havoc. So they took the barbed wire strands and put them through a trampoline so when the wrestlers hit it, they actually tied it so tight that they actually bounce up like as if they were hitting a real trampoline. It's fucking sick. Check this out. And he goes over! And the oh, oh, oh my god. god! Are you kidding? <laughs> Both men had to literally be helped by the fans out of the barbed wire, but they finally got out of it and kept wrestling their match. CZW adopted the barbed wire trampoline idea and had it at their tournament of death 16, 17, and 18. Here's some insane fucking footage of them using it. Tavik just went face first into an automobile that's parked over there. CZW's Tournament of Death 18 in the finals, they had an exploding barbed wire and light tube what trampoline. We're going to get here. Oh, no. No, no, no. Oh, oh God. He, what? Oh. Did it explode? Yes, it did. What the hell? No, 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 no. Did it explode? Yes, it did. What the hell? Another really cool spot was at GCW Zandig's Tournament of Survival 3 where in the finals they took apart the ring during the match revealing a spider net for them to throw each other into. Both men showing extreme agility to get around that barbed wire. Oh no. Oh god. And he just hung up in that wire. It even made its way outside of wrestling, and you can find videos of people jumping onto them right here on YouTube. Yeah. 
And he's bleeding. His head's back. Give him a clap. Good? Yeah, I'm good. Oh my god. I had a feeling that would happen. Here, hold on. You okay? Yeah, I'm good. You know what I mean? Yeah, I'm good. I'm good. <laughs> He's, He's fucked. Fucked. He's all right. He's fucked. Yeah, your hook's fucked. Yeah, I'm like, He's broken oh, okay. in half. Oh. Fuck god. Oh. Watch yeah. your right hand. Watch your right hand. Oh. <laughs> Jesus my Christ, up, Tyler. <laughs> what the fuck? Look at my pants. <laughs> oh my god, dude. <laughs> Flips fucking no, backwards. You got it. Got it, man. Ah! Oh, shit. Alright. Oh. God damn. I'm telling you. This was superhuman. Yeah, put your hood on. <laughs> this yeah. one's for my boy, superhuman. Yes, Fuck sir. this shit. This is for all juggle and juggle at. Sicey fucking swirl, baby. Right, three, two, two, one. Oh. Oh! oh. oh. Harley. Sick as fuck. Sick as fuck. Holy. Oh, yeah. uh, the my hair. Honestly, I thought he fucking you good? I'm good. Yeah. My hair. Can I get a little help? Fucked <laughs> 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 up. That look okay? Oh, oh still. God damn it. R.I.P. to Spider Boudreaux, who passed away in 2020 to COVID, and R.I.P. to J.C. Bailey, who passed away in 2010 to a brain aneurysm. And that right there is the history of the circus death match. I did a ton of research for this, and these are the matches I could find where they actually used the ring for the circus net. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you're new to the channel, definitely subscribe, and I'm uploading another video, so get ready for a Christmas death match. I'm in New York right now, but when I get back to Florida, I'll be chopping up more insane content, so stay tuned. And if you guys would like to show me some support, please head to patreon.com slash blakeo561 for exclusive Patreon content such as the shows I film, the videos YouTube wouldn't allow me to post, and Patreon exclusive matches such as Sabu vs. Terry Funk No Rope Barbed Wire Deathmatch from ECW where Sabu tore his bicep out of his arm and needed 150 fucking stitches to close the wound. Check it out guys. Special shout out and major thank you to my Patreon family. That's Thomas Sanchez, Damian Edgerton, Ben Ayling, Grant Stoppel, Garrett McNulty, Wolfie Kohaku, Jack Egan, It's Duck Sandwich Films, Andrew, Nicholas, Juan Luis Gonzalez, Logan Flanagan, and Crashy. And if you're not subscribed to my Patreon and you got some Christmas money, you know what to do. I love all you guys. Merry Christmas. Later.